This is KLAS-TV, Channel 8. Good evening, folks, and welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and this is the simulcast up and running now for the last day of February 1995 that there will ever be in the history of the universe. That would be the 28th. Don Rickles is on this program tonight, and on the second anniversary of the, uh, of the Inferno at Waco, we have David Koresh's mother here, Bonnie Holderman. That is our program, along with all of your phone calls on the toll-free highway. Then tomorrow night, we have Drew Barrymore here from uh, Boys on the Side, and that will be the end of the sweeps rating period here on the Late Late Show, and then on Thursday it'll be the Hunchback from Moline. <laughs> <laughs> Ordinary people and or <laughs> and he's tough to book, but <laughs> so last night here we're talking about this guy Bill Pavlik. Don Rickles has been making people laugh for more than 35 years. His live shows are always sold out, and his latest venture is back in the movies. Don, thanks for staying up late with us tonight, and welcome back to CBS. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> You're working now uh, in Casino, directed by Martin Scorsese, uh, and the, the picture is about Las Vegas, which you ought to love because Las Vegas is your second hometown. You're there a great, great deal of your time. Oh, yeah, and I was just finished uh, 18 weeks there, and <laughs> watching De Niro with his motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Drove me a little nuts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what, what is it like working with Scorsese and De Niro, those guys who gave us all these great pictures, like they gave us uh, Goodfellas and all these fine pictures that De Niro has done, Awakenings and all Well, you know, Marty does, you know, what he, what he really lived, yeah, yeah. He, the street. You know, he knows the street, and, yeah. and De Niro knows the street, and Pesci knows the street. I'm the only guy that came from class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in London. Yeah. Huh. But no, and these guys, and they, they, he gets that feeling, and Marty is very, very very conscientious and knows exactly what he wants and he made me feel like a million bucks i mean in this movie i figure i figure my academy award speech should run about twenty minutes right right you know in all due fairness you know and a lot of waving at the premiere but it, it was exciting to work with those guys especially you know when you see de niro and you realize this the impact he has on the screen you know he walked we have lunch together you know it's like being alone <laughs> so busy trying to figure out how to hold the fork. How do, you, how do you keep yourself calm down during movie making? Because as you know and the folks know, there's a lot of standing around and waiting for your scene to be done. Whereas in your live show, you go on, but a boom, but a boom, but a boom, and it's over, and you're on to the next. What, what about the discipline of having to wait for the director to say, now, Mr. Rickles? Well, there wasn't so much waiting. It was like a year. You'd go in your trailer, and Scorsese would say, we'll get to you. You know, yeah. all of a sudden, the sun's coming up, and you're still sitting there like a moron going, why don't they call me, you know? But it's a lot of waiting, but it's a lot of anxiety, too, because, you know, when you get on that screen and you're standing next to De Niro and Sharon Stone, by the way, who's very pretty, but yes, she both is. of us, are, you know, we're a little too old for yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know true. about you, but... No, no, I am, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, my leg kept going up. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know, my leg was always normal. All of a sudden, I'd talk to her and her leg would dance. I'm happily married, but yeah, right. <laughs> I would leave my wife. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> That's a joke, sweetheart, if you're listening. She don't listen. She sleeps face down in the pillow, you know. One of those, you know. <laughs> and so uh, working with those people is, is just great. You've been working in Las Vegas for, as I say, 35 years and more. How has Vegas changed over the years? What's different now from then? Well, Tom, you know, in the old days, it was, I always said it was one guy, one boss. You know, if you wanted to have a favor done or you wanted your suite changed or you wanted to have a little party or something, you went up to the boss and he took care of it. Today, it's four chits guys with cards here's my card right go to the bathroom here's my card right here's my card right. it's it's corporate and it's become you know family oriented in my day you went up and you said to the boss could i have uh, possibly a, i'd like to have a party in the lounge downstairs mm -hmm. tomorrow night and he would say why <laughs> For some reason they talk like that you know <laughs> why do you want to have a party <laughs> they walk into chairs when they were kids or something but uh there's <laughs> a lot of wonderful guys in those days you know <laughs> why do you want to raise <laughs> I said, no, I don't want to raise as he was twisting my wife's arm. But uh, it, was a, it was an atmosphere of uh, a, a personal, you were one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And today, it's, it's, it, they're all wonderful people, but... It's corporate now. Yeah, you, you, gotta, well, you, you don't guy, know who's in charge. You had guys like Bugsy Siegel when he was running st stuff over there. And, what happened to him? Uh, he died. Oh. And uh, uh, remember uh, uh, 
the guy that ran the Las Vegas Sun over there, Hank Greenspun. Oh, great guy. Okay. Yeah, it was just and great. Howard Hughes was living at the Sands Hotel, and Hughes would stay up every night and watch the movies on, on, on the television station, which Hank owned. Right. So now one day Hughes calls, he says, you know, he says, I don't like those movies. He says, I want some better movies. And Greenspun says, he says, well, Howard, we don't have the money to buy those movies. He says, geez, he says, I'll get you any movies you want. So now they put on the movies that Hughes liked, and every night he's calling again saying, I don't, he finally bought the television station. Yep. But you had guys over there that, that, like you say, they could get stuff done. They didn't oh, have to go to a committee meeting to get stuff done. Absolutely. And today it's a, you know, I work at the MGM in July, you know, I've been there before at the Hollywood Theater, but... I, I, to go down, for, for example, my suite to the elevator was like a three quarters of a mile, you know. Mm -hmm. I put on shorts and sneakers, yes. you know, to track me down to the elevator. It's, it's massive. It, just the, the whole town, everything around, all the, all the rides and the kids. The kids are great. They keep running into you, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I thought I was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know. <laughs> Boom, I went, ah, watch it, you know. And all of a sudden my voice got high with these kids running into me. But uh, it, it's, it's all family now, and it's, uh, it's a whole different ballgame. Which game. is fine, but it's totally different from what it was when you oh, started yeah. out there. I, I have no complaints about it, except that I miss the old, you know, you don't like to go in the past. Of course I miss, not. Of course. I miss the old time stuff, you know. Let fun. me ask you about another picture that you're in that your voice is in called Toy Story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah animation, and you're in it, and Tom Hanks, and a bunch of others. Yeah, Tom and, Hanks and uh, Tim Allen, yeah. And what, what is Toy Story? Well, it's, a, it's the first time with... The, with the uh, computers, they do it, uh, it's not animation, it's computers. Mm -hmm. And they came down, and I was down at my beach place, and uh, this director came down, John, and he said, listen, Don, we, we'd like to, you know, hear your voice. I said, for what? What do I need this for with a voice? And all of a sudden, this, this thing is going to be like Lion King. It's supposed to be sensational. And I've uh, seen some of the animation. And it's but great. now you do all your lines first, and then they do the computer yeah, it's like animation. Radio. You, go, you go into right. a studio, and you do the stuff, and then they show it to you on do, the screen. Do you like it? It's fun. Isn't it? <laughs> well, the check. Yeah, I know. You know but, but isn't it fun just doing your voice and, and having that be, it, it's your whole embodiment is your voice. Uh, fun is being home on the couch. That's fun. Oh, fun. stop it. Well, sure, I enjoy laying on the couch, turning on a ball game, which there won't be any this year. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to say to the wife, no more jewelry, sweetheart. I'm busy watching the game. But, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy, I really enjoyed uh, doing Toy Story. And, uh, uh, Toy Story, and uh, it's fun, but the real thing is... Uh, that the results, you know, when you see it come sure. out, that'll be exciting. When you but what's voice. great for you because you made some films early on in your career, most notably Run Silent, Run Deep, yeah. and now you're back doing film work again, which I know you enjoy, and yeah. it must be a kick for you to do that. Well, Casino is uh, this is the height of my career. I mean, aside from doing Kelly's Heroes some 28 years ago in, in Yugoslavia, telling Clint, to, see, we did a scene with Clinton. He does like De Niro. They, they do the same type of method acting. You say, uh, you say, how do you feel, Charlie? Where's the sergeant? And, Clint goes, huh? You go, huh? I say to De Niro, gee, gee, the casino is going busted. What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Ace? His name is Ace Rothstein. Yeah. Ace Roth Rothstein in the picture. I say, Ace, we're going busted. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie. All of a sudden, I, I had a pillow on my back and I was ready to ring a bell. I was going, huh? The whole movie, you're going to see me. It's the new I wave. got like cramps. It's, it's the new wave, Don. Oh, is that what it is? You made a picture some years back with Tony Curtis and Debbie Reynolds called Rat Race, yeah. written by uh, Garson Kanan, which was a very good movie. Yeah, I thought so. And it, it, got, it got lost. Yeah, and I played the heavy in that. I, I know. In those days, Debbie took off her dress, and she was in her bra, and I had a scene where I'd take her jewelry away, and it was like, wow. You know, yeah, yeah. today Sharon Stone gives it a big flash, and you, <laughs> and you start to lose. I start to dribble at the yeah, mouth. And, 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 you know. and what does your leg do? <laughs> <laughs> so between my leg and the dribbling, I'm in bad shape. Yeah. We, are with, we are with Don Rickles uh, here on CBS, and you know the phone number by heart, 800-95-CBS-TV, back after a short break.